Okay, so up until this point, everything that we have been doing has been a measure of location, but we're now going to move back to the thing that is the measure of spread. Remember that spread, right back at the beginning, spread was a completely separate part in the Venn diagram. Spread was the thing that told us about how things was organised. So we've been focusing on all of these things, mode, median, mean, quartiles, percentiles, deciles, and now we're looking at things that tell us how spread out the data is. So we're going to be looking at things like the range, the interquartile range and then later on we'll do the standard deviation and we will do the variance. So let's talk a little bit about some of these things that we can do. The range, the interquartile range and the interpercentile range are examples of measures of spread. Measures of spread tell us how similar or variable the data is. If it has a small spread, it means that all the data is quite close. In other words, all of the data is quite similar to each other. If it's big spread, then it means it's really varied and the data is all quite different because it's very spread out. So I've got this diagram here and this diagram is to try and represent a um, amount of data that I might have. I might have something down here to represent the minimum. Then I've got Q1, which is the lower quartile. Somewhere in here is going to be the Q2 or the median. Q3, which is the upper quartile, and then the maximum bit over here. So in this section at the bottom between the minimum and Q1, is the bottom 25% of the data. There's just 25% of data inside this bit. The middle 50% of the data is in here and the top 25% of the data is between the upper quartile and the maximum. And I've written a couple of arrows on here. Now you know from, um, well, probably even before GCSE that the range is just the distance between the minimum and the maximum. But the interquartile range is a specifically different one. The interquartile range is the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. And when you look at it on this diagram, the interquartile range is actually the length of that line. It's how far apart Q1 and Q3 are. So I'm just going to translate this interquartile range statement. I might say IQR interquartile range equals the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. And that's just going to be a number and it will tell you how spread out this data is. So I've said, why might we favour the interquartile range over the range? And one of the reasons is because the interquartile range ignores the extreme values. It ignores the extreme values and concentrates on the middle 50%. Now, the reason this is important is because let's say that we were talking about the heights of people um, in class and you might have most people are all similar heights and you've got one person who is super, super tall and would make the range suddenly really, really big. Whereas in actual fact, most people have really similar heights. But you've got one person who has such a tall height that they change the value of the range and they make the range really big. And suddenly it makes you think that the data is really varied, even though in reality, most people have a similar height. So the interquartile range is good because it's going to ignore these extreme values and it will allow us just to look at the middle 50% of the data and make an assessment about how spread out those bits are without the extreme values really affecting it. So I've said that we can actually control this further by having, for example, the 10th to 90th interpercentile range, which would be P90 minus P10. So this would typically be symmetrical about the median. So we would, wouldn't really do it um, in any other way. It wouldn't be from the 10th to the 80th percent interpercentile range because uh, that wouldn't have the median in the middle. And really, this is interpreted as the range of the data with the most extreme 10% of values at either end excluded. So sometimes when I look at the interquartile range, I think, blimey, it's quite a lot of data to ignore. We're ignoring the top 25 and the bottom 25% of the data. That feels pretty over the top to kind of cut off all of that information for the interquartile range. And so the interpercentile range, the 10th to the 90th, for example, is a pretty good one of ignoring the 10% extreme values either end and just focusing on the middle 80% that we've got. And it will just depend on the question of what it's asking for or what you think is going to be the most sensible way of analysing that data. So I'm going to try this example that we've got here. We're going to find the interquartile range for the this particular data that we've got. So it's talking about the age of a relic in years. Now, a relic is like um, a, 
usually like a medieval or early modern religious artifact. Um, and they're often found in churches or in other places of worship. And you can see here that these relics are actually very old. Some of them are even um, older than early modern or medieval. They're going right back to 2000 years ago. Anyway, what we're going to do for this is we're going to try and find the interquartile range. And I'm hoping that there's some things here you might have spotted. What do you notice about these values that we have in the table? I'm hoping that you've spotted that there are gaps in this. And so what we're going to need to do is to use the true class limits. So for the true class limits, these look like these have been rounded to the nearest year. I think for this first bit, it's going to be between zero and 1000.5. I'm not going to do all of these, but it would be 1000.5. I've written it wrong, no wonder. Confusing myself. 1000.5 up to 1500.5. Okay. So to find the interquartile range, we're going to need to find Q3 and we're going to need to find Q1. So I'm going to do the cumulative frequency. So it's going to be 24. I'll then add on the next values. So 24 add 29, that makes 53. I'll then add on 12, so I get 65. And then I'll add on 35, so I get 100. So for Q3 that I've got here, my position that I'm going to find is going to be three quarters of 100 which is the 75th item. So for the 75th item, this is going to be for my Q3. The 75th, this one here, is going to take me from the 65th to the 100th. So I'm going to do my interpolation now. So it's going to take me from the 65th up to the 100th. The 75th is going to be much closer to the 65th, and I am looking for, this one is going to be Q3, so Q3 is going to be here, and this group starts at, careful of the limits, it's going to be 1,700.5, and it's going to go all the way up to 2,000.5, make sure you're using the true class limits. So Q3 is going to be equal to the 1,700.5 plus, now let's work out this fraction, we've got 5 out of this gap, which is 35. So 5 out of 35 multiplied by the class width. So we're going to do 2,000.5 minus 1,700.5, which is obviously 300. So let's just do that calculation. It's 1,700.5 plus 5 35ths multiplied by 300. And so Q3 is 1743.36 to two decimal places for now, okay? It's going to annoy me if that's still in red, so I'm going to put that there in blue. Now I'm going to go up here so I've got some more space and I'm going to work out what Q1 is. Well, pretty obviously, Q1 is going to be a quarter of 100, which is the 25th item. So I'm going to have a think about where this one is going to be. So Q1 I'm going to do in green. The 25th item is just going to have snuck into this group because this group goes from the 24th to the 53rd. So when I draw this out, I'm going to have it going from the 24th to the 53rd. And I'm looking for the 25th. It's going to be so close. So I'm anticipating it to be really close. So this value is going to be careful using the right value, 1000.5, and it's going to go up to 1500.5. So my calculation for Q1 is going to be, well, the starting value, which is 1000.5 years, plus the fraction from the top, well, between here and here is 1, and between here and here, 24 and 53, I think it's 29 because I can see it from the table, it's 29, so it's going to be... 1 29th of the way along the class width of the bottom and the class width of the bottom is 500. Don't even need to do that on the calculator. So my Q1 here is going to be 1000.5 plus 1 over 29 multiplied by 500 which is 1017.74. 1017.74 1, and obviously both of these are in years. So the interquartile range for these relics is going to be the upper quartile, 1743.36, subtract 1017.74. 
So let's do that on my calculator. That's 1743.36 minus 1017.74. So we get 725.62, 725.62, which I'm just going to make it a little bit more rounded and say 726 years. And that's to the nearest year. So it's saying that the gap between the bottom 25% and the top 25% of the data is 726 years. OK, you can pretty much see what's going to happen for this one. We're going to do the 10th to 90th input into the centaur range. And this time we're doing it for the length of a shark that we've got. And you'll notice that these are already the true class limits. So I don't actually need to adapt any of those. Alongside here, I'll do the cumulative frequency. So it's going to go 17, 22, 30, 41. 17 and 5, that's 22. I'm going to check all that because sometimes I'm just worrying my adding isn't going to be very good. Or my typing, it seems. 17, 5, 8 and 11. Great, 41. So the 10th to 90th interpercentile range um, doesn't really have a, we don't really have a great way of writing this. So I'm just going to say that the interpercentile range is just going to be P90 subtract P10. So I'm going to begin by finding out what P90 is. Now, the P90 item is going to be 90% of the way along 41. So you're going to get some quite unpleasant numbers here. So we've got 36.9. We want the 36.9th item. And we're going to set it up by using this. OK, I'm going to do this one, the 90th one, for the 36.9th. I think it's going to be inside this group here because it goes between 30 and 41. So it's going to be going between the 30th and the 41st, somewhere in the middle, not sure exactly where, 36.9. It's going to be a bit closer to the 41st. 41st. That's where my P90 is going to be. And that group goes all the way from 600 up to 1000. So the 90th percentile is going to be the starting value, which is 600 plus this fraction. So from here to here is 6.9 out of the whole distance of this um, of this section, which is clearly 11. You can also spot it in the table. Multiplied by the class width of the bottom bit between 600 and 1000 is 400. So let's get that all in the calculator. 600 plus 6.9 elevenths multiplied by 400. So the 90th percentile, ignoring the, that top 10%, we think that the length of the shark will be 850.91 centimetres, and I've done that to two decimal places. So I'm going to repeat this, but I'm now going to be doing it for the 10th percentile. So it's going to be P10, which is going to be the 10th percent, sorry, the 10th, uh, the 10% 10, 10 of the way along from the data, so 10% of 41, which I don't really need the calculator for, it's going to be the 4.1th term. I never know if it's 4.1 or 4.1st, but I'm going to go with 4.1th term. And so this one I'm going to highlight in green. The 4.1th term, think about which group that will be in. That is going to be in this group that we've got here. OK, so this group is going to be taking us from the start point, which is the zero point up to the 17th. And we're looking for the 4.1th or 4.1st term. And that goes from 40 to 100. You may not need this diagram because when it starts at zero, it's actually going to be really obvious what these values are. So you may not need the diagram for this. And this is where P10 is going to be. So P10 is going to be the starting value of 40 plus 4.1 over 17 multiplied by 60. The 4.1 is this distance. The 17 is this distance. And then the 60 is this distance that we've got here. I hope that's pretty obvious. You wouldn't have needed this diagram because we just know I'm going 4.1 of the way along this gap. So let's just get this all in the calculator. 40 plus 4.1 of the way along that 60 bit. Uh, is that right? 40.4.1 17th. So it's 54.47. That is 54. 0.47 centimeters to two decimal places. So we're just going to finish off the interpercentile range. Obviously, we don't usually use this notation because it could be different numbers, but we're just going to do P90 take away P10. 
So I'll do my 850, 0 0.91, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 796.44, which I'm just going to do to the nearest centimetre, but it will always be clear in the question what it needs to be. And so that is 796 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. OK, let's have a quick look at what I'm going to ask for you to do. So I think you can now do some stuff from exercise 2D, which is all going to be about these measures of location and spread. They might ask you about range as well. Um, remember that range is going to be things that are inside this table. And these are always going to be estimates because we've had to do interpolation. As soon as you're doing interpolation, there are going to be some estimates. I'm also going to show you some extra questions below because exercise 2D isn't very long. So I'm going to hover on this bit here so that you can um, have a look at these questions and pause the video. Or you can go to the Bison Maths Google Drive to get this PDF. Um, and you've got some questions to ask. You'll see they tell you about what they're going to be written to, to three significant figures. There's a few more questions here, so you might like to pause the video and have a look at these ones. And I'm also then going to show you the answers for all of these questions so that you can check them as well. Like I was just saying, if you do go to the About section on my channel page, you will see there's a link to a Bison Maths Google Drive. You can then go to the blank lesson plans, uh, blank lesson notes, sorry. Go to Stats, Chapter 2, download this, and you'll have them all there in front of you as a PDF. Okay, great, we're going to stop there.